Hello there everybody, Sam Strains here, welcome back to the railway and welcome to another review. Today I'm looking at my first ever locomotive, can I call it a locomotive? I guess so, from Ellis Clark Trains. This is a model that I've been following for quite a long time. I own one of these in double O scale, but today's model is an O gauge model. And it is this, the Ellis Clark Wickham Trolley. And yes, I think this is actually the product packaging. It arrived in this box and I started to open it up, but no, I started to see sort of instructions and bubble wrap where the model was. So I stopped unboxing it and I'm gonna continue on camera in just a second. But it's only a box, of course, what I'm interested in is the contents. So this has been on the cards for a little while. They're available right now for £150, and it's a brand new design, new tool, what have you. And as I understand it, this has been a massive challenge for Ellis Clark to produce, because the motor is actually inside the trolley itself, unlike the 00 scale version where the motor is hidden away inside the trailer. So sounds like an impressive piece of kit. For the first time, I'm going to open this up and we'll take a look at it together. All right, the new Ellis Clark Wickham trolley. This time there is literally nothing to see on the outside of the box, so I guess I'll crack in straight away and see what's inside. So it opens at the front, as I found out when I accidentally started opening it. So we have actually got some printing on the inside of the box. Uh, Wickham, where England, so that must have been Wickham's logo. Very interesting. Then we've got this pack it looks like what's this on the outside of it i think we've got uh, a pin let's have a look oh yeah all right so it's a little pin badge with the ellis clark logo on it it's a pretty nice extra very welcome indeed and then yeah it's like a little pouch actually oh look at this so yeah why not let's start by having a look at this first of all we've got an advert for the press flows well you've seen that check out that video if you're interested Here's a little bit about the Wickham trolley and trailer. So this is what we're dealing with then. Yeah, Wickham trolley and trailer, 150 quid. And yes, the DCC sound option adds 130 pounds and it's 280 quid if you want that. You can also buy the trailer separately and they are 30 pounds each. Although obviously you do get one free with the trolley itself. And there you go. There's a bit of info on the trolleys themselves. So feel free to pause and read that if you'd like to. Although I will give you a potted history in just a second. Uh, I've got another thing about the press flows. So yeah, advertising for other products. Okay. And then what is this? Okay, another catalogue. Um, I won't look at that right now, but I will off camera. And what's this? Another show. So I'm, I'm looking for paperwork about the Wickham trolley. I'm just finding paperwork about anything but at the moment. Yeah, there's their shark that they're producing. All right, we've got one more sheet. Um, no, that's not instructions either. Okay, um, bring the box back in. Maybe this is a product box. Oh, there's another thing here. Is this instructions? No. No, this is about their new quad art coaches. Okay, still no instructions for the Wickham. Wow. So, finally, we have an actual product box. And it's tiny. Yeah, it is absolutely tiny. Okay, so there you go. You've got a nice line drawing on the front of the box of the Loco. And then on the end, you can see a bit more of what I've got here. It is E1021Z. It's a Wickham trolley and trailer in the BR maroon with a white roof. And I guess that might be the running number, B40W. All right. Let's have a look then. Let's lift the lid. Hopefully we've got some instructions inside here. Oh, yeah, maybe we do. <laughs> All right, God, look at this. So this is a quick start guide, apparently. It's literally the size of a bookmark, and the images are all upside down. I suppose this is supposed to be folded over, but never mind. Uh, okay, for running on DC, the model is fitted with a high-quality cordless motor, which may make more noise than normal on older. Okay, yeah, that's fine. I've got modern controllers, that's okay. As this model is so small, it has been installed with an X18 chip, has it? These come DCC fitted, I didn't know that. Running in, yeah, run it in for 30 to 60 minutes. Yeah, I don't know, it's claiming that this has been fitted with a chip. Uh, I thought this was an analog version. Maybe that's just if you buy a DCC fitted version. 
I'm not sure, we'll just have to have a look. I've uh, got some stickers, Ellis Clark Trains, it's quite a nice sticker. What's this? Oh, look, a few stickers with the Wickham logo on, yeah, that's pretty good. Limited edition certificate, oh, look at this, I didn't realise this was a limited one. Certificate number 30 of 50, wow, I only made 50 of these things. Oh, that's quite impressive then, now that's what I call limited. And then we have this, ah, oh, right, we might actually have some proper instructions then, awesome. Wickham trolley, tiny, just like the trolley. <laughs> One in the box, okay, a little bit of information, radius two and larger curves, that's fine. Maintenance, just a little section on maintenance there, keep it clean is essentially what it says. Lubrication, needs very little lubrication, light machine oil, yeah, okay, that's fine. Uh, okay, yeah, there's a bit more on where to apply the oil, I assume, so that looks good. DC models, so yeah, I'm guessing this will be DCC ready. Chip fitting, this could be useful, so it shows that the base of the loco comes off, and that gives you access, by the looks of it, to the motor and presumably the DCC socket as well. And the location of the various accessories, I will take a look at the accessories in just a second. And then here's a bit more, it says Our Little Wickham. So that's a bit of info on the model itself. Some more history. So we've packed full of history here. That's pretty interesting. And I think with that, we will move on and take a look at the model itself. So are you ready for the reveal? I know I am. It's a very light box. Yep, yeah, very lightweight, but again, quite a small loco in inverted commas. Okay, here we go. All right. So, here we have it. Let's tease a little bit. Let's start with the accessories, as always. So, what do we have here? So, we've got what I think they call curtains. These are what can be pulled down, I suppose, if it's raining, to protect the people on the trolley. Looks like we've got a couple of toolboxes in there. A plate, does that say? I think that might say Wickham on it, that little plate. Uh, it's unpainted, but yeah, I think you can put that on the front if you want to. And a few other bits and bobs in here as well, and the instructions did go over what those were, so that's pretty useful. Put that back away. Let's have a look at the trailer then. Now again, the trailer does not contain the motor in this case. Uh, this is literally just a free piece of rolling stock, I assume, but that's a great bonus, and I'll certainly take it. And noticeably, the first thing with this is that it is die-cast. Yes, this is a metal model. It's quite an expensive model, comes in at £30 if you want to buy one of these on its own. So it does make sense that it is high quality, but I'm glad to say that it certainly is. Seems to run on proper bearings, as you can see. Yeah, and there's a fair bit of detail on there, as you can see. We'll take a closer look at that in just a moment. But for now, let's put that to one side and have a look at the Wickham itself, which, as I understand it, can operate independently from the wagon, which... To me, an owner of a 00 scale Wickham trolley is a foreign concept. Wow, the Ellis Clark Wickham trolley. And it is impressive in that it's hard to imagine where a motor could possibly go on here. And if I flip it over, yeah, you can kind of get a sense of that. You can see, in fact, where the motor is almost strapped to the base there. Very interesting. And you can also see that it's got traditional wiper pickups, two per axle to ensure maximum continuity, I assume. Um, but yeah, that's good. That's a nice, simple solution, isn't it? Wow. Yeah, this thing looks quite detailed, quite a bit more detailed, in fact, than the 00 scale version. I mean, this is quite an expensive model at 150 quid, and yet you can totally understand why that would have to be the case. Seems to be pretty good quality as well at a first glance. I will look a lot closer at this in just a second and talk a bit more about it. But yeah, on first impressions, I am very impressed. Let me hold the wagon with it. It's got a little hook which can hook around the coupling. There you go. There's the complete Wickham trolley. So here's a bit of background on the trolleys in real life. And then we'll take a much closer look at this model and its level of detail. The Wickham trolley was built by Wickham of Ware and first appeared in around 1948. It wouldn't be until 1949, however, that British Railways took delivery of their first trolley. Well over 600 trolleys were built in total up until about 1980, and not all were standard gauge either, like this one. Wickham produced trolleys in both narrow and broad gauge too. 
These vehicles, more similar to road vehicles really than railway ones, were fitted with mostly Ford car engines, which made them extremely versatile and also cheap to run and maintain. They were even light enough to be manually lifted off the track and turned around via a little portable turntable so that they could quickly change direction. Though the trolleys are not really used by British Rail anymore, many still exist under preservation and plenty have been restored by enthusiasts who are really dedicated to preserving as many different variations of the trolley as possible. So there it is, up close and personal for you. Ellis Clark's brand new Wickham trolley, complete with little die-cast wagon. And you know what? Yeah, this is a pricey bit of kit. 150 quid for the tiny trolley and the wagon. Quite expensive, but let me tell you, that money is reflected in the model in every way. It's been incredibly well designed by the looks of it. Very carefully assembled, I would say. There's obviously an awful lot of detail to this, which we will get to in just a second. And the decoration is also very good too. And I think we'll start with that. So yeah, apparently this is the limited edition Wickham trolley from the S&DJR railway. This is a preserved Wickham trolley, apparently. And yeah, it's just beautifully decorated. You've got the white slash cream roof, which has got all the riveting and such on it, which looks great. On the ends, there's these little British Railways prints, which are very high quality. I like that a lot. On the ends, you can see we've got the running number, which was on the box, so that explains that. And then inside, there's an awful lot of decoration as well. You've got the painted wood floor, which has some great definition to it. The planks on the benches, these are separately painted brown. And my favourite feature, which is the painted dials next to the driver's seat. And uh, while we're looking at this, we might as well look at some of the other controls, because you've got some foot pedals. Really is just like a car, this thing. So yeah, you've got an accelerator, presumably, maybe a brake as well. You've also got a lever, perhaps that's the brake, what looks like a gear stick as well. All of the controls and such are fully modelled. The level of detail is also tremendous on here as well. If we look at the ends, you can see we have an etched grille in front of the engine, and it appears to have some detail behind it, but I can't quite make out what. Still though, that looks awesome. You've got these little separately fitted handrails on each corner. They look really nicely applied. Little separately fitted wiper in front of where the driver would be. Very, very fine piece. You have got the lamps. The double O gauge Wickham trolley just had painted blobs where its lamps were, but these actually do have LEDs in them. You can see the SMD LEDs. And if you look inside, you can even see the wiring where these lamps are connected. So yeah, looks as though we've got working lights on here, which is fantastic. You've got these pieces here. I believe these are the handles so that the crew can get out and lift this thing up off the track. A really cool little detail. And then on the other side, I'm not sure what that would be. Maybe it's an exhaust or something, I'm not sure. But uh, that is separately fitted as well. You've got the glazed windows, which look great. Individually glazed as well, by the way. And loads of detail on the benches themselves. Like I say, the planking on the seat is a separately fitted piece. And then you've got the framework itself of the seating, which is very, very finely produced. Here are the wheels, which are obviously cast, and there's quite a bit of detail in those wheels too, which I like a lot. Let's have a quick look at the wagon then. Lovely finish on this body due to its metal construction, and it does match the trolley itself, even though the trolley is mostly plastic in its construction. You've got the little brake lever here, which is connected to fully modeled brake rigging, as you can see around the wheels. Yeah, that looks fantastic. You've got the planking effect inside the wagon, as well as a decent bit of underframe detail, and of course the coupling hooks and drawbars on either end. In terms of weight, the wagon itself comes in at 34 grams, so relatively heavy, I think, for its size. And then the trolley itself is only a little bit heavier at 55 grams. As I say, that is mostly made of plastic, and most of it is just empty space, as you can see. But this is not an 8F, it's not a heavy locomotive, it's not supposed to be hauling much more than a couple of these wagons, and I'm sure at 55 grams it will be more than heavy enough to do exactly that. So very impressive, like I say the build quality is incredibly high, I've not seen any visible glue or any wonky or missing parts, so you certainly get what you pay for where that's concerned. But now I want to see this incredible model work. Does this really run well, given how cramped the mechanism is? Well, let's find out. Let's get it onto the O-gauge track. 
So there it is on the layout, the all new Wickham trolley from Ellis Clark. And I have to say, it makes quite a refreshing change not to be faffing around with couplings to get this one set up. Yeah, you just hook the trailer's drawbar onto the trolley, it's very easily done and you're ready to go. The first performance test has been filmed and I'll show you how that went in just a second. After that though, I took a look at the mechanism and that's what we're going to take a look at now. So first of all, the pickup situation is pretty good. On the trolley itself, there are dual pickups on each wheel, which does produce a relatively reliable electrical connection, although that is it. There are no pickups on the trailer, and I think if they'd included some, that would have made the model much more versatile because it would be much more reliable and less sensitive to dirty track. Now, in terms of accessing the innards, the instructions made it look very simple. You remove some screws and then the base comes off, the motor and wheels stay in place. Well, that's not how it went. I undid the screws as shown, but then the base would not come off. It turns out that there is a wire under here which really keeps the base from coming off. With some gentle easing, I was able to pull that wire through and get the base to come off but the motor and the axles and the DCC socket all came off as part of the base because the wire is kind of stuck to the base as well, so it all kind of comes off together. So it was a bit of a pain because the wire had been pulled tight, the DCC socket came out of position and it was kind of floundering around. Yeah, not the simplest low coater access, but the next 18 socket is there and you can do a reasonably good job of accessing it, I suppose. You can see that there are no bearings on the axles here. The axles sit straight onto sort of cast bearings, I guess, on the chassis itself. Obviously, that's not a big deal. This is not a big heavy loco that really needs bearings to sit on. But Backman's Wickham trolley in double O scale, really good quality mechanism on that one. And that one did have the bearings. So a little bit strange that this one doesn't. You've got the coreless motor, of course, which drives this, and it's a very, very simple setup. There's just a pair of worms connected to that motor, and they interface directly with the driving gears, and that's it. There's no flywheel or anything. I don't think that's a big surprise because they're very limited on space here. So it's a very, very simple mechanism. And then the gauge comes in at 28.8 millimeters, which seems to be exactly right. And they were both consistently gauged as well. So there's the mechanism. I mean, it's a small loco. There's not a lot of room for a complex mechanism here. And as a result, it is very, very simple. But how does it actually run? Well, let me go back and show you that performance test. Right, it is the moment of truth. Does the Wickham trolley run? And also, does it run well? Quite an expensive piece of kit, so hopefully it will. Anyway, let's set the controller and let's give it, for the first time, a little bit of juice. Okay, here goes. Oh, I saw a twitch. Oh, there it goes. And I saw the light come on as well. That's nice. Uh, trying to go. It's cut out a little bit there. Oh. All right, so it hasn't been running yet and running in is required. Um, yeah, it seems to be struggling. Let's give it a bit of a... Okay. So hopefully this will become more reliable as it goes because it does keep stopping. There we go. I might give the track a fresh clean. Obviously I do clean it periodically, but it seems as though that might be necessary this time. So yeah, bear with me a second. I will give it a fresh clean. Okay, the track has been freshly cleaned. I just wanted to eliminate dirty track as a possible cause of issues, just to give the Wickham trolley the fairest possible chance. So let's try again. Ooh, tell you what, it's made a difference, hasn't it? Crikey. Okay, great. So I should now be in a position where I can actually run the trolley in, which will be good. Um, yeah, it does seem to be really nice and smooth. It doesn't seem to be cutting out or anything now, which is good. So the pickups are obviously good and reliable. I like that. The lights are quite good. Yeah, they're nice and bright. The colour temperature is a little bit orangey. I guess this is supposed to look incandescent. I think it's more orange than incandescent, really. Um, but at least they're good and bright, which is good. Right, well, it hasn't been running yet, but let's have a look and see what the crawl is like, because obviously these are not fast vehicles, so the slow speed performance is going to be quite important. So let's have a look. Wow. 
Wow, indeed. Look at that. Looks like it's even... Is it wheel slipping? <laughs> the wheels seem to be turning faster than the trolley itself. Can we go even slower? No, I think that's probably about the limit. Maybe not. Look at that. So, yeah, this mechanism is good, isn't it? You can just tell that it's good. Great coreless motor. That's a very good choice of motor. And uh, it's really able to turn those wheels incredibly slowly. It's got a fair range of speeds. Look at that. In reverse. Really nice and smooth. And again, this has not been run in. This is literally its first run. And already it seems good and smooth. Let's have a look and see what the medium speed is like. What's the gearing like? Forwards, 50. It's pretty fast. Yeah, it's a speedy thing. But those coreless motors are so good that you can still get decent performance right down to the lowest of speeds, which is really good. All right, lovely. So I think next I'm going to put this across my points. We'll get it onto the other line where there are some tighter curves and we'll engage the shuttle system and get this run in. So let's get started. Oh, other way. Here we go. So far, pretty impressed with the performance here. OK, here we go. These points <laughs> do seem awfully large for such an awfully small loco. Oh, hang on, hang on. There we go. <laughs> OK, well, that was successful, though, wasn't it? Let's try it in the other direction. Can't see there being any issues. Yeah. Really, really good performance then. And I think these points are second radius, so it's fulfilling its promise of being compatible with R2, which is very good. Excellent. Right, let's engage the shuttle and let's see how it gets on around the tighter curves. Right, so I've set it to about 30 on the controller and I think that will be a sensible speed for this to run in. So any minute now it should go. There we go, backwards it goes. Yeah, it seems like a really decent runner, doesn't it? It seems it's very, very sensitive to dirty track work. Like I say, I do clean this track periodically, and yet it still needed a fresh clean before this would run even close to decently. So do bear that in mind if you've got an outdoor garden layout or something like that. You really are going to want to keep on top of cleaning your track. And possibly this would have been better if there was maybe a conductive drawbar and pickups added to the trailer. But certainly I'm not seeing any reliability issues now since cleaning the track. Anyway, I love it. It looks fantastic. I'm now going to run it in fully. It's going to have 30 minutes in each direction. And then we'll come back, do some final performance tests just to see where we're at. And then I'll give you some ratings. But yeah, so far, very impressed. Really, really enjoying the Ellis Clark Wickham Trolley. All right, folks, that is running in complete. And yes, since cleaning the track, not had a single issue with reliability. So that's definitely a big tip. If you've got any problems, don't jump to dismantling the thing and trying to adjust pickups. Give your track a clean. That's quite an easy way to fix the problem. Anyway, yeah, perfectly good. It handled the tight curves OK, never cut out or anything like that. Obviously, never derailed. And they say this supports second radius curves. I think this could go much tighter. The trailer is not particularly close coupled the wheelbase of both vehicles is really really small so i think as tight as you can make a curve this thing will probably handle them within reason anyway how is the performance now still nice and smooth look at that no flywheel action so it does kind of start and stop dead i guess with a dcc controller then you could probably get a bit smoother performance out of this but yeah it is it is smooth once it's up to speed that's for sure how's the crawl then this was really good before is it still good let's see see if i can get it to engage at the slowest possible speed i'm just really easing it up yeah it's going already and i'm set to less than 10 on the controller and it starts to move that's quite rare but that's the efficiency of a coreless motor for you and this is on analog, just to clarify, and I really can't imagine any need for this vehicle to go any slower than this. No, it has cut out though. Oh dear. A bit more? No, it just stalled then. Didn't cut out. Yeah. It's absolutely marvellous. I mean, it's quite expensive, but you certainly get what you pay for in terms of performance. Look at that. Yeah, that's really, really good. I'm impressed with that. In terms of pulling power, obviously it's not much of a hauler and it's not supposed to be. 
but I did force it to pull up to some pretty large in comparison DAPO open wagons and incredibly it pushed them along as though they weren't there at all. Obviously this Wickham trolley would never be pushing or pulling anything like these wagons. Um, the most it will ever have is maybe what three of these I can imagine and it's going to be able to do that without any problems at all. So pulling power absolutely fine. It comes in at 0.1 newtons of tractive effort but that's all you need. Right, let's have one final run then, and I'll give you some final thoughts. Here we go. So there you have it. Loads of detail, lights, and some pretty smooth running as well. So I'm really impressed with this thing. I like unusual models, and the Wickham trolley is certainly quite unusual. So well done, Ellis Clark. I'm a massive fan of this trolley. Check out the other trolleys if you're interested. They do lots of different liveries and different versions of this and even different trailers. I think there's a flat one as well. They are good quality models, so check them out if you're interested. And now for some ratings on the excellent new Wickham trolley in O scale from Ellis Clark. The level of detail, for me, I don't think it can be anything other than five star. The interior detail is absolutely marvelous. It's got lighting, it's got all of the controls detailed in there, etched grills, proper glazing, loads of separate details. Really, really impressive. I think it has to be a five. The performance similarly is a five star. Now I will preface this by saying it is very sensitive to dirty track. It is well worth giving your track a quick clean before running this thing just to make it run at its best. But once you've done that, it's really smooth, reliable, and the crawl is excellent as well. Top, top performer. Pulling power comes out at around two O-gauge coaches. Obviously, that's not a lot. This is the weakest O-scale puller I have, but when you think about what this thing is really intended to do, one or two wagons at the most, that's more than enough. So pulling power, absolutely fine. Mechanism, while perfectly okay, I think is possibly the weakest aspect of this loco. It's quite light on pickups, it just has them on the trolley itself, not on the trailer. I think that could have been improved. There are no separate bearings on the axles, and accessibility isn't great either. Yeah, disassembly, a little bit of a pain with this one, but it's not too bad, and with a little bit of effort, it shouldn't be too infuriating to chip and service one of these. So yeah, it's not too bad. The quality for me is a four star, very high quality. The build quality is great. The way that all of the details have been assembled is really good. The Wickham trolley itself is quite plasticky in its construction. I guess I would have preferred a little bit more die cast, but that's not a big deal. So definitely four star. Value for money then, it is £150 for a DCC ready Wickham trolley and if you want a sound fitted one they are £280. The trailers are £30 each. So I don't think they're bargains or anything but it is a fair price in my opinion. It's a high quality model with a fair few features given its size and it does work very very well. So at £150 I don't think that's too bad, that is four star. So overall then, that is a really good score of 8.76 out of 10, or a grade of A. Into the logbook it goes, we're starting a new one for O-Gage Locos this year, and of course it is top place. Yeah, this is a really unusual yet excellently produced model, and I can highly recommend it. Well done Ellis Clark, absolutely love it. Well folks, that will just about do it for this review. I've only reviewed two items from Ellis Clark. It's this and the press flow, and both of them have been extremely impressive. And that's a good sign for Ellis Clark's future models, isn't it? Can't wait to see those. And if they're produced to the same quality and standard as this, then they should be pretty fantastic too. But for now, I'll say thank you so much for watching. Comment down below if you've got any thoughts on this Wickham trolley. Have you purchased one? What do you think if so? Are you going to purchase one? Please do let me know. For now though, thank you so much once again for watching and I'll catch you next time. Cheers folks, you take care.